It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about gateways and tunnels. So when you're trying to self host, one of the problems that you can run into is especially on home networks and depending on what part of the world you're in and who your ISP is, they can put all kinds of blocks in place that can keep you from hosting on your home network and actually accessing those things from outside your home network. Some ISPs have you on double NAT or CG NAT, which means you're really behind two different routers that give you private IP addresses, which can make it really hard, especially when you don't control the router or routers to set up any kind of port forwarding that you might need for reverse proxying. The other issue you can run into is they just simply block ports 80 and 443, which are very, very important to self hosting a lot of times. And that can make things very hard. So one of the ways to actually get around that, or we should say through that, is to create a tunnel where you're reaching out from inside your network and basically saying, hey, here I am. And then you have some kind of server out on the internet on the cloud that actually creates a reverse proxy back into your network that way. And one of the projects that I just saw recently on self-hosted uh, Reddit is uh, called Self-Hosted Fractal Gateway. It's really a cool project. It's pretty great. I tried it out the first day that I saw it. I had a few little issues, and I talked with those guys over on their on their uh, Element, uh, on their Matrix server, and they really worked with me to kind of figure out what was going on, and they fixed things, so it looks like everything's running pretty smooth today. So I'm going to go through this with you guys. You can give this a try. Again, it's a really great way to get a nice, secured VPN tunnel that lets you get back to your services, but it doesn't require you to run a VPN on your device. It really just sets up a VPN between the virtual private server you set up in the cloud and your home server, home lab, business server, whatever you're looking for. And it gives you a nice secured connection to that. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it. And I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the steps to kind of get this set up. So you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a server in the cloud, something like you can get on DigitalOcean or Linode or Oracle Free Tier. It, it doesn't matter where you set it up. It needs to be a Linux server. It needs to be able to install Docker and Docker Compose. And it can be a fairly small server. So uh, I'm going to set mine up on DigitalOcean. Um, the next thing you're going to want to have is access to some kind of domain or, or subdomain that you can point to that server and access that server. And then also use to create subdomains so that you can actually access your applications through a subdomain name because that's kind of how this tunneling works. So we're going to set up a few of these things and I'll go through all the steps with you here today. And then you'll need Docker and Docker Composed on both the server. And then if you're running your, your client applications un, under Docker, you'll want it installed on your client server as well. So you've got your VPS server with Docker, Docker Compose. You've got your client server with Docker, Docker Compose. And then on each machine, we're also going to clone this repository and then we'll run a few commands and we'll kind of be up and running. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to set up a DigitalOcean server real quick. I'm just going to say create a new droplet. This is just how you do it in DigitalOcean. It's probably very similar in Linode. I'm not sure about Oracle Free Tier. I haven't used their stuff before, but, but that is out there as well. I'm just going to stick with the Ubuntu 2204. It's, it's the one I'm familiar with. Here they've got basic. And then if you click on this little dot here, you'll see the prices change. And there's even cheaper ones. There's a $4 a month if you want to go grab that. Uh, it may work. I haven't tried it. Probably will, um, just depending on how many services you're trying to run on it. But $6 a month is, is fine. Um, I'm going to stick with New York. That's physically close to me. Uh, both of these are kind of about the same distance. I'm right in the middle of the United States, so these are the same distance either direction. But try to pick a server that's physically close to you, no matter what host you're using. Just helps with latency. Um, the next thing we want to do is we're going to move down and I'm going to use SSH keys. So I have an SSH key set up on my on my test server already and I'll go ahead and set these other SSH keys. Now the things that are popping up, that's my public keys. It doesn't hurt anything for you to see that or grab that. It's just going to give me access to your server if you were to put it on there. So it's nothing nothing useful for you and, and from that standpoint. But SSH keys are, are more secure than passwords. So I like to set those up. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to give this the name. So I'm going to call this my get because I already know what I want for the application that I'm going to run dot route me home dot org. So 
this is just the name for the server, but I like to name the server the same thing that I gave it for the for the FQD and the fully qualified domain name. Um, you don't have to do that. You can name this anything you want to. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a, an application that I'm going to tunnel that, that it's just a little application I made that's basically a to-do list and a shopping list and a task list and a and a menu system for my family that we use. It's nothing special. It's nothing that you want to go grab most likely because it's, it's just not something like most people would want. That's kind of a power user thing. It's more for simplicity. But uh, I'm going to set that up and then reverse proxy it using this domain. Now, if you have a whole lot of applications that you want to do this with, it would be better to say, you know what, I'm going to point routemehome.org if you owned it. And in this case, I own routemehome.org. But I'm going to point that to this server using a wild card. And then anything you create on the server, as we get into the command on how to generate this tunnel, will automatically point to, to our server. So you can create a wild card entry in DNS. So let me start this thing generating and we'll jump over here and we'll talk about DNS. So I've got routemehome.org set up on GoDaddy. It works fine. Um, it's not my favorite. I prefer Hover just because their, their tools seem a little bit better to me. But uh, GoDaddy's okay since that's where it's kind of set right now. I've just never moved it over. Um, so we're going to go in here. We're going to say, you know what, let's create an A record. And uh, if you, again, if you're going to create a wildcard, you just put asterisk right here. And then you'd put the IP address of, of your domain uh, server up here on, on DigitalOcean right here. And that would say anything that comes in for .routemehome.org, it doesn't matter what the subdomain is, it's going to say point that over to this server. And then that way you can kind of set up subdomains as you wish. You don't have to keep coming in and setting up new records. But in this case, I'm going to set up the actual subdomain. Uh, so I'm going to do my get and I'm going to put it in the IP address of my DigitalOcean server that I just created here. And you can see here's the IP address. I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in right here. And then I'm going to set this to a custom time and I'm going to set it for 600 seconds, 600 uh, seconds, which is 10 minutes. And we're going to hit add. Oh, I have to tell it that I want an A record. Yeah, let's tell it we want an A record. There we go. Add. OK, got to tell it what kind of record you want to create. So it's going to update the DNS for me and it's going to try to go through and set that up. So I should get that in about 10 minutes. And then we've got the server here. So we're going to go set up our server. So the next step is log into our server. So we're going to go into our uh, terminal here. So we're going to go, uh, this is on the left is going to be my server out in DigitalOcean and on the right is going to be my local server. So on the left, we're going to do SSH root at, and that's that IP address we just copied. I'm going to tell it yes. And it has my SSH keys, so I can SSH in. And the reason you need the SSH keys from your from your desktop is so that you can get in here and do this work. But you want the SSH keys from whatever your local server is as well. So if that's a different machine, make sure you generate SSH keys and put those out there on, on your server as well. Um, so that you can, because this command is going to try to use SSH to get in there and do the things that it needs to do and set up that tunnel. So you're going to want to have that set up. But we're into the server. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to update the server. So apt update two ampersands, apt, upgrade, and then hyphen Y. This takes just a minute, so we're going to let this run, and, and while we're doing that, um, I'll, I'll talk about why I do this separate from the script that we're going to run, just because on a VPS, a lot of times it gives you a couple of interruptive prompts that my script does not handle, so I do this separately. So this is one of those interactive prompts that I'm talking about, and if this was to come up while you were trying to run my script, my script would not show this to you, and you wouldn't know that it was there. It would just seem like the script was hung and took forever. So that's why I do it separate from the script. So I'm just going to hit enter here. And then I'm going to just tab and hit enter one more time just so that'll kind of go through and finish. I'm going to clear that out and then I'm just going to install, uh, I need to install make on this server. So uh, apt, we don't have to do sudo, we can do apt install make. And then again, just pass through these prompts. We've got make installed. The next thing we want to do is we want to add an, a user that's not root to our server. So we're going to do add user and the username you want. In my case, I want Brian. And then the password you want for this user, we're going to enter and then make that a strong password. And then you can just kind of go through these. You don't need to fill all this out. So we're going to add our user to the sudo group. We're going to do user mod hyphen a capital G sudo the name of the group and then the name of as many users as you want you can put more than one user just with spaces and it'll add them all to the sudo group in this case it's just me so i'm going to hit enter so now my users in the sudo group but i don't have the ssh keys set up for my user so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to move some ssh keys over from my 
uh, root user here, and then I'll change those to be owned by me. I know there's other ways to do this, but this is just the way that I do it, and it, it works fine. So we're gonna do cp hyphen r dot ssh to slash home slash Brian, and then we're gonna do ch own Brian colon Brian slash home slash Brian and we're going to put this as dash capital R and then we're going to change that to a slash like it should be so there we go so what we've done here we added our user to the to the to the pseudo group we copied our SSH keys from root over to my my user and then I changed the ownership of those uh, certificates over to that user as well so that they'll function so we should be good we're going to exit and we're going to SSH in as Brian instead of root. There we go. We are logged in as our user that is now not root but has pseudo privileges. So that's good. So now we're going to create a folder or we're going to create a new file, um, nano, and we're going to call this install docker.sh. And out here on my GitLab, I've got a script that I've created to make this a little bit easier and I'm just gonna control a here I've just got this on the raw view and I'm gonna copy it and then I'm gonna go back to my uh, terminal windows and right here I'm just gonna sh control shift V to paste my system prompts me yours might not uh, and then I'm gonna do control O enter and then control X to exit just to make sure I saved it make sure I got the right name we're going to change the permissions, so we're going to do chmod plus x, which means executable, for this script. And then we can run this script. So we're just going to do dot slash and then the script name. This is going to run a script. It's going to show you, hey, here's what I see your system as, which is Ubuntu 22.04 and then Jammy. So that just helps you know, like, what should I pick here? And in this case, it's 22.04 Ubuntu, so I'm going to pick number four if you're running a different system. Try to find your system in the list and pick that number. And then I'm going to be prompted for my super user password the first time. And it's going to say, do you want to install Docker CE? Why? Yes, I do. And then Docker Compose again, yes. And then the rest of these, I'm going to say no. And it's going to go through. And if you're running this on your home system and you're not worried about getting that kind of weird prompt that DigitalOcean gives you, you can just run this. It'll do the update for you. But if you're not running it on a home system, then you might want to go ahead and just basically run your update first and then run this. But you can see it tells you as it goes what it's doing. So right now it's installing Docker CE. It'll do Docker Compose next, and then we'll move on to the next steps. So after I install Docker, I do try to set your user into the Docker group so that you don't have to type sudo for all the Docker commands. But one of the things that you can do is either just log out and log back in to get that change to take effect, or you can type in newgrp and then any WGRP Docker. And that should put you in that in that group. We'll do Docker PS just to make sure and you, you should get basically nothing because we haven't run anything yet. All right, the next step we need to do is, is actually clone the repository for the self-hosted gateway. So I'll have all this stuff in the show notes just so that you can copy and kind of paste it in there. Um, so we're just gonna do, there we go, get clone. And it pulls that down, and if we do an ls now, you'll see we have this folder that says self-hosted gateway. So we can cd self-hosted gateway, and we're going to do make setup is the first command. And then we're going to do make gateway. So you need to have make installed or it's not going to function. And this is going to pull down their Docker uh, compose image and do a few things that it needs to do, and it's going to run through a little build real quick. And then it'll have the things on the server that we need pretty much set up. We don't have to do anything else right now on the server. All right, server side is complete. Now we're going to move over to our client. So over here, I'm just going to make this full screen. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do this git clone. So we're going to do control shift V with that git clone command. We're going to clone that into our, into our client server. So that's the server inside of our network. And then we're going to CD into that self-hosted gateway uh, system again. I'll clear this out to keep it easy for you guys to read. Now, if you don't have Docker uh, in installed on, on your client server, you'll want to do that as well. And you can follow the same exact steps to get Docker and Docker Compose. If you're going to run Docker apps, you want to have Docker installed on your client machine as well. But 
just know that you need to have kind of everything set up the same on both sides, server and client. So now one of the things we want to make sure we have is we want to have our SSH agent ready for this uh, system. So we're going to do eval and then backtick SSH agent dash S and then backtick again just to make sure that it's ready and kind of set up. So the next thing we want to do is we want to run SSH dash add tilde slash dot SSH slash ID underscore RSA. This makes the assumption that when you created your SSH keys, you just left it as the default name of ID underscore RSA. If you change that name, then use whatever name you, you put in for the, for the SSH key file that you made. But you're just adding this to the, to the project here. So we're going to hit that and you should get some kind of response that says identity added. Okay. And we're kind of at the, at the last bits of our steps here, but we need to know a little bit about the application we want to run. So real quick, I'm going to go back out of this folder and I'm going to seed into my Docker folder. And I have this application here called get my, and this is just an application that I made, um, that I run here at my house. And it's just basically a shopping list application and things like that. And if I CD into it, you'll see that I have this Docker compose file. So I can just nano that Docker compose file here. And you can see that I've got this set up so that it goes and it sets up this service called GetMy, which pulls down my, my repo from GitHub. And it, it forwards port 3105 to 3000 because 3000 is a common port. But in this case, we're going to expose 3000. And we're actually going to use that for this tunnel because we're going to add a, a section down here after we run this command for the self-hosted gateway. It's going to generate a section. We're going to add that to our Docker Compose file. But this just runs and it uses Mongo, so it uses two services, and we're going to add a third service that gets generated by this self-hosted gateway script. And it basically says, hey, connect this up to my server in the cloud, and then when people go to myget.routemehome.org, point that to this server. So we're going to kind of go through the steps and what all that means real quick. So I'm going to get out of this, and I'm going to CD back to my home directory, and we're going to go back into our self-hosted gateway directory. So we're going to CD self-hosted-gateway, and we'll clear this out. And now we need to run a command that's going to basically set up that stuff and get it running for us. So, so I've got this really long, kind of very detailed version of this uh, little command line. It's just one line, really, but uh, we'll kind of go through it together here, and we'll change the things that need to be changed. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger for you guys that are on your mobile devices just because I think it'll be easier for you to see what we're doing. But what this does is you're going to run make link and then gateway. Again, you need to have make installed in your system is this, uh, this is creating a variable called gateway. And then this is your SSH server or SSH user and host. So EG Brian at whatever. So I'm going to take out this part that says com and all the little angle brackets. And I want to make sure I go all the way back here to the equal sign, and this is Brian at myget.routemehome.org. And then you have this FQDN section. So this is what you want your domain to be called that you're going to be trying to access, basically. So I'm going to use myget.routemehome.org to access the GetMy app. If I was going to do something that was Lemmy, it might be, you know, mylemmy.routemehome.org. So you're going to put in the, the domain name that you want to use to access your app here. So again, I try to explain that inside of these uh, angle brackets. So we're going to get rid of those things. We're going to leave FQDN equals. And we're going to say myget.routemehome.org. Now, understand that this domain and this domain for your SSH do not have to be the same. In this case, they are, but this could just be routemehome.org, uh, brian at routemehome.org, and then this is the subdomain that I'm adding to it. It all depends on how you set up your DNS and how you're going to use this server. So just understand that. In this case, they're the same, but they don't have to be. Finally, we're going to expose the app in Docker Compose that we're running. So you want to make sure that you're exposing the app that has the web interface. If it's a web interface app, you want to make sure that's what you're exposing. So make sure you know which part of your Docker Compose file that is. Sometimes it's called app. Sometimes it's called front end. Sometimes it's got the name of the application. It just depends on the applications that you're running. And, and there's no way I could cover every possible scenario, but, but understand that. So in this case, it is going to be called get my, and it is going to run on port 3000. So we'll just get rid of all of this stuff in front of it here. 
and then I'm just gonna go right here and get rid of that last little angle bracket. So this should be good. All right, now that we've got everything typed in like that, we're just gonna press enter, and this should go out and try to SSH into our server, and then it runs two scripts. So before we do that, let me highlight this, and I'll just show you kind of what it's doing in the background, because you might be curious, and, and I can understand why you would be. If you don't wanna see that, skip ahead in the timestamps, and, and you can kind of see what happens when we run this script. But uh, I'm gonna copy this, and then we'll just control C out of it. And we're gonna CD into the gateway folder, and then the scripts folder. And there's a script here called create link.sh, and there's a script here called underscore create link.sh. So what happens is we run this create script, create link.sh. So if we do cat create link.sh, you can see here kind of what it's gonna do. So it says set dash s. Now you could just run this this command this way if you want to, if you don't want to run it from where we are, or if it doesn't work for some reason, you can try to run this directly. But it's going to say set this thing, and then it's going to tell us, you know, um, SSH host is dollar sign one, which is some of these arguments we're putting into the script, basically. So that's it's grabbing some some variables here. It's going to run down and run through this thing, and it's going to say, you know what, we need to grab some stuff. So we need to grab a, a, a wire guard gen key. So they give you a few comments here, and then they're going to export the container name. They're going to get a little bit of information. They're going to get FQDN, and they're going to change that to be the name of your container, basically. As you go down, they're going to link your WireGuard public keys. And then at the end, they're going to cut out this little bit of YAML that you need to add to your Docker Compose file. So that's your create link.sh. If we clear that, we do cat underscore create link.sh. Partway through that create link.sh, it calls the underscore create link.sh and it runs it on the server. So it SSHs into your server and it runs this script. So again, on the server, it creates a few variables. It sets up a few things and runs some commands and sets those as variables. And really what this is doing is grabbing information so it can come back and give you that text that you're gonna want to run uh, inside of your Docker Compose file. So this is kind of what's happening. So it, it does create link.sh, halfway through it calls this one, which it's already SSH to your server, and it runs these things on your server, and then it comes back and finishes up on your client machine. So it's basically doing everything that you need. You could do all these commands individually, one by one if you want to, but it just does it for you really quick, which is nice. So we're gonna do cd dot slash dot dot slash, and we're back here, that's good. And we're just gonna paste in our command again, make sure we've got everything right. So we're gonna do run make link gateway equals my name at my server, FQDN equals my server that I want it to have for the URL and expose this app on this port. So as your app changes and port changes, you can run this and create a whole bunch of different tunnels from the same server. Again, if you set it up so that you can have multiple uh, subdomains, then the server kind of handles that routing for you, which is pretty nice. So we're gonna hit enter and just see how this goes. It's gonna prompt you, you're gonna type in yes for the SSH. And there we go, it ran, it was very fast. It doesn't take any time at all. And down here at the bottom, we've got this link. And then you can see it says, here's the image it's gonna pull. So this is the section that it creates. So you just wanna copy this. So we're gonna do Control, Shift, C to copy, or you can right click and do copy, whichever way you wanna do it. And then we're gonna CD dot dot slash Docker slash get my and we're going to clear this out. And if I do an LS, there's my Docker Compose. So I'm going to do nano docker compose .yaml. I'm just going to move down to the bottom here and I'm going to do control shift V or you can use your paste command. It's kind of up to you how you do that. But then right here, you want to make sure you space this out two spaces. Everything else, paste it in correctly. But, but YAML is very space dependent. So it's very important that you make sure you get all these things set. But you can see here, it got a gateway client uh, WG public key and the gateway link WG public key or the private key for the client, the public key for the gateway link on the other end, which it needs. And then it's got the IP address, the public IP address and the port number that it's running on. So it sets up your endpoint. This is kind of just helping you generate the URL and the tunnel f for everything. And it just, it has this capacity add net admin, which it needs. So we're just gonna do control O to save it. Control X to exit, and we'll do docker hyphen compose up dash D. Now, if we go to myget.routemehome.org, 
Yes, so that brings up the application. I can click here, I can get to my registration, login screen, everything's functioning, and you can see that I'm going through HTTPS, and this is basically running through a WireGuard tunnel from my VPS out on the cloud into my home, and I didn't have to open any ports, I didn't have to do anything like that to get everything functioning, so this allows me to get back to my services inside of my home. So that's the self-hosted gateway. Like I said, these guys have been terrific. I'll have a link to their uh, Matrix channel so that you can go over there and ask questions if you need to. I have links in the description for all the things that I've been using. And of course, in the show notes, I'll have a detailed guide of how to go through this and how to set things up for yourself. So hopefully this will help you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the open source journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.